Hi all, I am Sumit Agrawal, Apache Ozone Committer and Senior Staff Engineer from Cloudera. I'll be taking deep dive into resource manageability in ozone storage. Here, I'll be giving brief about the ozone and then we'll be continuing over ozone resource manageability. Further, I'll provide the quota impact over various ozone features such as snapshot, trash. Finally, we'll be doing quota comparison with Hadoop. Apache Ozone is highly scalable, distributed storage for analytics, big data, and cloud native applications. Ozone is developed to manage the scalability issue of HDFS and is developed by the Hadoop community. Ozone supports S3 compatible object APIs as well as Hadoop compatible file systems. Ozone can scale up to billions of objects and work effectively in containerized environment like YARN or Kubernetes. Ozone also support Spark, Hive, and YARN without any modification. It is optimized with efficient object store and file system operations. Ozone is strongly consistent similar to HDFS and S3 object store. It can scale up to thousands of nodes with dense storage configuration and hence reduce the cost per TB using community hardware. Like HDFS where name node manages both namespace and blocks. But here in Ozone, it separates the management of namespace and blocks. Namespace is managed by the Ozone manager and Storage Container Manager manages the blocks. Here, container contains the uh, group of blocks for manageability. Data node provides the storage and access of blocks. Over the right side, we can see Raccoon Server, which monitors the ozone and provides various metrics and insights about containers and its health. Ozone as to the client provides various file system connectors, CLI tool to access the ozone and S3 gateway for the S3 API access to the ozone. Ozone organizes the storage as volumes, buckets and keys. Volumes is similar to a user account only administrator can create volume or delete volume. Buckets are similar to Amazon S3 buckets. A bucket can contain any number of keys. Keys are similar to files. Ozone provides the capability such as OBS object store. Here that all keys and files are stored at bucket level as flat, as we can see over the right side of the diagram like volume with bucket one is having all keys at, at the same level within bucket. FSO file system store, it stores the files with directory in hierarchical namespace, as we can see in the diagram over left side. With brief ozone introduction, we'll be continuing with Ozone resource management. Ozone storage provides resource management such as storage space and namespace. Namespace is the number of keys or files or directories. Ozone provides resource management feature allowing to define and manage limit, also known as quota, for using space and namespace. Ozone provides management at volume and bucket level. Ozone quota can be assigned based on the business use case, such as business user size, depends on the different applications, as well as depending on the project size. Related to resource management, 
taken an example. Whenever a file is created, this will occupy namespace uses as one. And space uses is file size in bytes multiplied by application factor. Application factor is the number of replicas we need to keep for the file. A folder, whenever a folder is created, this will only occupy the namespace. And it does not have any space uses. Space quota in ozone is provided at volume and bucket level. A bucket space quota defines the overall uses limit for the buckets under volume. Like here, a finance volume is defined with space quota of 200 TB. And this finance volume is having two buckets, auditor and payroll. Auditor is being assigned with quota of 30 TB and payroll with 70 TB. There is remaining unallocated quota of 100 TB, which can be assigned to new buckets or can be distributed um, uh, among all dedicated auditor and payroll buckets. Bucket space quota defines the maximum space users limit by keys and files recursively under the bucket. So here like auditor with space quota of 30 DB, TB, it can, all the files which are created in this auditor bucket can consume maximum up to 30 TB including its replica. Similarly, namespace quota is also defined at volume and bucket level. Volume namespace quota defines the number of buckets which can be present in the volume. Example here, a finance bucket defined with namespace quota of 10. It, and here, two buckets are created, auditor and payroll. So it is having remaining capacity to create eight more buckets. Bucket namespace quota is the number of files or keys or directories inside the bucket recursively. Like example, auditor bucket is defined with the namespace quota of 1000. So it a user can create up to 1000 files or keys or directory inside the auditor bucket. Ozone provides CLI tool to manage the quota. A quota can be created while creating a volume or bucket using the option such as volume create or bucket create with option providing space quota and namespace quota. A resource uses and quota information can be checked using volume info or bucket info. It also provides option to clear the quota or set the quota for volume and bucket using volume set quota, volume clear quota, bucket set quota, bucket clear quota. Here taken an example, we are creating a volume with 200 TB space quota and 10 namespace quota for the volume finance. Next, we are creating a bucket with 30 TB space quota and 1000 namespace quota for the bucket auditor inside the finance. So once we check that volume info about the finance, it is giving the quota in bytes of 200 TB and quota in namespace of 10 as defined. There is one bucket created, so use namespace is one. When checking about the bucket info, it provides used byte and used namespace is zero since we have not created any files or directories inside the bucket. And quota in bytes of 30 TB and quota in of namespace is 1000.
Link buckets are buckets being linked to the volume. It is like a symbolic link in the Linux operating system. So the volume having linked bucket can be accessed or operated as normal bucket. Taken an example, a volume common having a bucket log to store the logs. There's an application app one, which is defining a linked bucket app log referring to the log bucket. So application can access the actual log bucket using the URI as app one slash app log. Later to quota, the app log uh, bucket will refer the quota of source bucket that is log. So if any files or keys is being created inside the app log, it must meet the quota defined in the log bucket like space quota of 10 dB or namespace quota of 1000. Some points about the quota is the quota of volume and bucket is not enabled by default and hence the access is unrestricted. That is a user can create any number of files or directories and can consume the space limited by the data node disk space. Related to space quota, once the volume space quota is enabled, the total bucket space quota cannot exceed the volume space quota as defined. And volume space quota can be set without enabling the volume quota. Like we can enable, we can set the bucket quota independently of volume quota when volume quota is not enabled. But once the volume quota is enabled, it needs all bucket quota to be set within the volume quota limit. And hence disable bucket quota also needs volume quota to be disabled for the consistency. Some of the design consideration for the quota is quota in ozone is defined at granular level of bucket. Ozone does not support defining the quota for the directory or a directory level. In Ozone, whenever a file directory or keys are created, a metadata of the resource uses is kept at bucket level and compared with the same. So here, all the bucket metadata in Ozone is cached in memory. So whenever that any bucket key creation or deletion operation is done, it's directly compared with information in memory of the bucket. Okay. Quota reclaim. Relation of files, keys, and directory is known blocking in Ozone. That is, whenever a files or keys are deleted, the metadata is removed immediately. But actual cleanup of the data will happen in the background. So related to quota, whenever files or keys are deleted, it is reclaimed immediately. So whenever a file is deleted, namespace uses is reduced by one and the space uses is reduced by the file size multiplied by the replication factor. So it is possible that whenever all the files and keys are deleted, the space uses in the DN is not reduced, that is still occupied as data nodes. That is because the actual data deletion will be happening in the background. For FSO bucket type, for the recursive deletion of directory, once a parent directory is deleted, it is removed immediately from the metadata and user will not be able to access it. But in the background, further recursive deletion will continue to delete its subfolder and subfiles. 
So this also, uh, as since it is happening asynchronously in the background, the quota will be reclaimed as when the subdirectories or subfile is getting reclaimed in the background. So like whenever a top level directory is being deleted, the quota may be seen as occupied, but it will clean up once all the subfiles and directories iterated to be removed. Now I'll be comparing that quota with various ozone features such as snapshots. So a snapshot in ozone is a copy of the ozone manager metadata at that point of time. That is keeping that mapping of keys and files to data blocks. Here related to quota, whenever a snapshot is taken, it does not lead to increase in the namespace or space uses. That is quota is being shared between the snapshot and the actual ozone metadata. So whenever a object is deleted, ozone checks for the ref, uh, uh, checks whether it is being referred by any snapshot. If it is being it is not being referred, then the quota is released. Otherwise, it will not be released and being occupied. And once the snapshot is deleted and not being referred, that time the quota will be released with the object. And object will be deleted at background. So it is possible that even object are deleted from the metadata and user will not be able to access. But quota release does not happen as it is might be referred by the snapshot. Next, we'll be comparing the impact of quota with trash. Trash feature in Ozone is applicable to FSO bucket type. So whenever a file or directory is deleted, it moves that file or directory to the trash folder. The path of the trash folder is the inside the volume bucket with a dot trash, the user who is performing the deletion and the current directory. So by default, it will consume the namespace quota of three for the dot trash user and current directory. Further, whenever a file or directory is deleted at some hierarchy, it can consume an extra space to keep the hierarchy structure in the trash folder, which may be recovered later on. Okay, like in an example, a source is having a file.txt at directory one and directory two. So whenever a file is moved file.txt to a trash means it is being deleted that time a uh, file will be removed from the source folder having the directory one directory with empty and trash will be having a file.txt with directory one and directory two keeping same hierarchy which is created implicitly so this will consume two extra namespace uses for the directory one and directory two Yeah, so already we have uh, seen that design consideration for the performance of ozone, that ozone supports defining the quota only at volume and bucket level, whereas Hadoop supports quota at a directory level, means in a hierarchy of uh, directory structure, user can define quota to any of the directory or multiple directory in the directory hierarchy. So this consideration for ozone limiting to only volume and bucket is taken for the simplicity and performance. Here that whenever a quota check happens in the Hadoop, it is multi-level, like it will check to all its parent if any quota is being defined and compare with the minimum quota. So uh, for ozone, 
we are planning to support user level quota that is able to specify quota for each user. This feature is not currently supported by SDFS. Further, for quota, we can refer the ozone documentations. Yeah, thanks for any further uh, information or doubts. Please reach to me at given mail ID and the Slack channel. Thank you all.